It's like, you know, it's just a place for, you put those little sags in and it's just a place for stuff to settle. Randy, is there any special kind of hose that you recommend for this or is it just sprayer hose or sprayer hose? Oh, uh, this, this braided hose is, is probably gonna last a little bit longer. You know, anything that you can buy that's got, you know, if it's got any UV protection in it, then you can look at the stuff that, uh, you know, that came off of it. And, uh, you know, this is, this is a less expensive hose here, but the thing that's got this is not, uh, not the chemicals or anything you spray through it, it's the sun. I mean, any of our plastics, uh, the sun's what tears them up right. more than uh, anything. Kind of like boats, you know? Uh, the sun tears more boats up than water. This is the uh, this is the line that goes back to the boom, and so now, essentially, you know, when we're ready to spray, we pop that valve open, and the spray will go through here, back to the boom, and along all the lines that we have along there. Pop it up, we're done. Well, Randy, it looks like we've got some water coming through it. Yeah, we've got it all put together, and uh, you know, now's the time you check for leaks. You got some water, and uh, we got a, a, a little challenge, I think, with our pressure relief valve. I don't think it's functioning quite correct. Okay. You know, we've got it all together; it's working. Still a little bit of work, I think, to do on the booms and on the hinge points and the breakaways. But outside of that, uh, you know, for a few hundred bucks, we got a, a, a pretty high quality sprayer right. as far as our plumbing goes. Anyway, still got right. the old frame and booms and everything. That's right but uh, plumbing is the most important part. That's always the question is, uh, how much money should you put into something versus buying something new? And I guess, you know, the right parts are new, it works out all right. Yeah, I guess you, you can price it out. Again, I think we probably got about four or $500 in this. Uh, that's the, you know, we bought a pump, we bought all the plumbing accessories. So since everything that holds water besides the tank is new and, and it's of real high quality. So it'll last for a long time. Right. All right, well, I guess uh, let's go check out that pressure valve. All right, thanks. Thank you. you bet. Well, it's that time of year. We're starting to see a lot of weeds out in our fields, Joe. Let's just say we, we have a sprayer. We've built a sprayer. We bought one recently. Go back to the beginning, and what do we need to know about operating this thing out in the field? Well, I would, I would think the very most important thing you need to do is calibrate your sprayer. So you need to know how much uh, product you're going to be putting out per nozzle uh, across the entire boom so that way you're not applying too little and not getting the activity you want and basically wasting your time and money there right. or applying too much and again wasting product um, and probably causing injury to whatever crop or, or pasture or whatever you're, you're trying to control weeds in. Okay and how are we going to go about doing that? Well kind of the old standby, the old traditional way for calibrating a sprayer is to uh, calculate the gallons per minute per nozzle. And there's a formula you use where you take your uh, um, desired gallons per acre, total output, multiply that by the width of each nozzle, uh, usually it's 19 or 20 inches, okay. and then multiply that by your speed in miles per hour. Okay. And then you divide all that by this constant, 5940. And that'll give you a decimal, uh, usually 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, right. and that's your, your gallons per minute per nozzle. Okay. So then the next step is go out there and turn on the turn on the sprayer and collect uh, from each nozzle tip for a, a set amount of time, and you can kind of back calculate and figure out how much you need to collect there to, to equal that gallons per minute per nozzle. Okay. Another way to do it is use this uh, little spot-on sprayer calibrator, and basically you just hold this underneath the the nozzle tip. It'll fill with water, and there's a little electrodes in there that that sense as the water is filling and then it'll tell you right on the screen here your, your gallons per minute. Wow. So this is a little simpler way, yeah. kind of an expensive tool, but, but uh, it does make it a little bit easier than doing all the calculations. And, and really fast. Yes. Um, okay, so we, we've got uh, our sprayer calibrated. We know it's putting out the right amount. When we start mixing things inside the tank, 
there's a, a, a process and a way that that needs to be done. Yep, you need to put things in in the right order. Uh, there's an old acronym, WALES, W-A-L-E-S, or, or DALES. Uh, the first one, W or D, it would be your wettable powders or your dry flowables. Okay. Put those into the tank first. Then the A is for agitation. So get those mixed up. Sometimes you can put those into a slurry mm. uh, where you'll put those in, in a little bit of water, get those dissolved, mixed in, and then add that mixture to the tank. Okay. L is for liquids. That'd be your next thing to put in. Uh, that'd be your glyphosates, uh, any of your liquid herbicides. E is for emulsifiable concentrates. Um, that's a lot of our, our grass type products, Prowl, uh, Sonoland, Dual, any of those types of products are, are usually formulated as ECs or emulsifiable concentrates. Okay. And then the S, the last one, is for surfactants. So your non-ionic surfactants, your methylated seed oils, any additive that you'll put in there uh, to make the herbicide work better. Okay. And you're not necessarily going to use all of those every time you go out and spray them? No, sometimes you'll just use um, maybe one herbicide and a surfactant. You know, if you're using glyphosate or Roundup, right. a lot of times all you're going to use would be ammonium sulfate and you'd always add that to the tank first to condition the water mm. um, and then your glyphosate product or whatever other herbicide you're going to use and then the surfactant there at the end. Okay, so it's just a step-by-step -step process for whenever you're going to be putting those in the tank. Yeah, and, and when you start adding in liquid fertilizer, you know, 28% or something, you need to be very careful that the herbicide is compatible with that fertilizer mixture. You can't run into problems where you'll uh, gel up in the tank and won't get any spray out of it. Won't nozzles. get anything out of it. I guess the last thing is uh, putting it down. And when you take it out there, uh, speed recommendations, how fast you go, how slow you go? Well, it, it all depends on how much you want to put out. Um, obviously, the, the faster you go out, or the faster you travel, the more you need to put out at a time. Um, and, you know, depending on your sprayer size and how much ground you need to cover, that'll determine a lot of that. Um, really, the output is probably the most important thing, your gallons per acre. Okay. And, and that has a lot to do with coverage. Um, you know, if, if you're trying to get very good coverage, especially with things like uh, insecticides or fungicides, right. higher gallons per acre is going to be better. Um, Sometimes you can get away with very low gallons per acre with some of these herbicides because they, they move throughout the plant. You don't quite need the same coverage there. All right. Well, good information. Sure hope that helps people out. Thank you very much. You got it.